Um, hello everyone, I'm going to try to explain to you how to start using the Prefab Atlas from scratch. Um, this hopes to be a short tutorial into how to set it up and use it in code, and as well in the editor. So the first thing we need to do is to import the Atlas. And uh, after that, if you go inside the Atlas, you will see there's examples. We're just going to go to the basic sample. And in here, um, you'll see the Prefab Atlas Spawner, which is the class I'm going to be using in order to show how the Atlas works. And uh, over here is telling me that there's no Prefab Atlas in this project. OK, so our first step will be to actually create the Atlas. If you uh, go to Tools, you'll see there is a Prefab Atlas Editor option over here. If you select that, it would immediately create the Atlas if one doesn't exist. All right, so first let's talk a little bit about the, um, the division over here. So you first have the groups. Uh, here is uh, where you're gonna be creating your groups and then organizing your groups however you feel like. Uh, then over here we have Prefabs. Uh, uh, when you select a, a, a group, uh, their prefix will be displayed over here. And finally, we have the scene object setup. Now, the scene object setup is uh, where we uh, set uh, like how many uh, prefits we want to preload of each. Uh, what's the maximum capacity of the of the pool? And well, all the things that come with any uh, pooling system. So the first thing we need to do now is to create the scene object. So that's going to create an object over here and it's pretty much empty so now we're going to create our own group first we create the group and you can change its name we're going to call it uh, my group one all right and it doesn't have any prefabs now the example comes with a prefab over here and you can just drag and drop and it will add it so now if i select this it shows, it shows me the the cube over here and then you can select it, it will take you to the, in the inspector, it will take you where, where the cube is, as well as in the project folder. Okay, so there's, that's one way of adding um, elements to my group, but there's another one too. So I'm just gonna create uh, a sphere. Now this sphere is not a prefab, so you can use uh, drag and drop it over here too. And now the sphere is, you can see now it's blue because it became a prefab. And now the sphere also lives inside the uh, prefab generated folder and inside my groups one. Now, this is my favorite way of uh, working with the prefab atlas, simply because it automatically just um, organizes every single prefab for me instead of me having to, you know, make the prefab and drag it in. So it's, it's very nice. Okay. So now, uh, yeah, well, we have a group. There's two prefabs inside of them. We can modify the their preloads and capacities. Now, the first one is the default value. Uh, if you set default values over here, like if it said that we want to preload five of each, we apply the defaults. I'm gonna ask it, do you really want to do that? And then we say yes, it would apply to the cube and the sphere because both of them belong to the micro first. Okay, now, of course you can go ahead and just modify it after and it'll be fine. Now, this is pretty much how you set it up. Now, you only need to do one more thing, which is commit. Uh, once you commit, your project will reload, as you can see. And now uh, your prefab atlas is ready to be used. Now, if you go back to the prefab spawner, now uh, this is using a PAT, which is a prefab atlas tag. Uh, it's um, a custom uh, property drawer element which allows you to select which group you want to uh, use and it'll give you the options inside the group. So now let's, let's make the cube. All right, uh, so also, uh, so you can see here, like this, uh, the Prefab Atlas Spawner. It's a very uh, simple class to illustrate how to use the Prefab Atlas. So first it asks for a spawn position, uh, which you can set in the editor because everything is public. Then you had the path which is the spawn ID we're gonna be using. 
and then our spawn rate, so how fast it's going to uh, be spawning, like in their intervals, basically. And then uh, elapse, elapse time in order to keep track of time. Now, uh, on enable, I, uh, I cache the prefab container using the PAT value. Now, this is only one way of doing it. Uh, you can definitely just um, do it straight. I, I will show that after. But let's continue for now. Uh, then in the update, you have a uh, elapsed time, delta time to keep track of the time. And as soon as the time is enough in the interval, and if the container is not null, just some safe check here, uh, you can spawn the, the prefab right now. Now, the the prefab in the in the cube. Now I'm gonna use the cube just just because it has uh, this class fall over time, uh, which um, basically what it does it literally falls over time. <laughs> but after uh, I believe it's two seconds. After two seconds, it will set the uh, the game object to false, meaning that this is. This is all we need to do in order to return the element in, to the prefab atlas. OK, so now let's see how this works. All right, we have my group set up in the queue. Now if we run this, see, there is the, uh, the cubes falling. There's also the sphere, because we left it on the scene. And they are being despawned and, well, and respawn after. Now, in over here in the hierarchy, you can see how is, this is structured. So we have the cube bag. So we have all these cubes being used. Also, we have so many because we actually preload on a bunch. Now, if I were to go to the spawner right now and make the, I'm going to pause a little bit here, make this like very, very small, it will spawn a bunch of them real fast. Up to a certain point, it will stop growing and start using them because they only last for two seconds. So yeah, that's how we use the prefab atlas. Uh, now for some uh, niceness, you can see how many cubes are alive and how many cubes are alive in, like, in total. So this is the number of alive in the scene, and this is the number of alive total. We have four spheres, and none of them are alive because yeah, we are not spawning them, but we could. Uh, let's spawn the sphere. All oh, right, um, this is not going to work because we, um, in the spawner, we uh, cache the container. All right, so I think it's time to show you guys then the other way of doing things. All right. Over here, we're going to do a small change. Instead of using the container, we are uh, going to be using the pad directly using one of the new features of the brief atlas, which is a spawn. Now, sp spawn is very nice <laughs> because uh, it allows you to use, you see, uh, you can use the tags directly if you want to. So either a cube or a sphere. And you can also use the path value. We're going to be using the path value right now. Spawn ID. And we also want to specify uh, the position. Now, this is heavily overloaded. For you to actually now for whatever you want to do now uh, i want to pause the spawn position spawn position close okay so now we go over here uh, wait for it to reload and we run this again oh yeah sorry The container is null, obviously, because we're not initializing it. We don't need that anymore. That was my safe check to prevent people from trying to run it before before setting this up. OK, <laughs> sorry for that. I'm also going to eliminate this view. See now? All right, now we have the cube. And it's spawning at the proper spawn rate. Now we have a bunch of cubes. Oh. Yeah, if it's lower than zero, I'll go for a while there. <laughs> okay, let's make a lot of them. Now, if we uh, change this dynamically, uh, we'll have spheres. Now, spheres are not recycling, as you can see. There are a bunch of them being created 
and none of them are going away because they don't have that functionality. So let's go back to the queue. <laughs> and well, yeah, that's pretty much how you use the private class uh, with the spawn.